I've compiled the absolute best tips and tricks for you to massively boost your SAT score. And no, I'm not talking about the basic get a good night of sleep and use Desmos tips. I'm giving you the gate kept advice that top scorers don't want you to know. So if you're dropping cold 1300s on your practice test, lock in for just the next 10 minutes and you'll see a big improvement. All right, so tip number one is gonna be subject verb agreement. And the way that you're gonna identify that you can use this trick on a question is simply by looking at the answer choices. You can see that all of these answer choices are different tenses, right? Some of them are singular, is, some of them are plural, right? So that's how you know that it is testing you on subject verb agreement. So here's what you can do. Completely ignore the passage, just cross it out, you don't need to read it. Look at the answer choices, and you need to find the odd one out. Now, what do I mean by odd one out? I mean, which one is either singular while the rest of the answer choices are plural, or which answer choice is plural while the rest of the answer choices are singular. And how are you gonna test that? Well, you're gonna test it by reading it out with a he before and with a they before, right? He is for singular. Any singular word is gonna have he, right, or she, but a plural word could have they or them, right? So read them out and figure out if he makes more sense or they makes more sense. So he is, he is happy, or would you say they is? You would say he is, right? What about for B? Would you say he are or would you say they are? You would say they are, right? They are happy. You can't say he are happy. What about have been? He have been? No, you would say they have been. And then what about were? Would you say he were or they were? Well, you would say they were. So what does that mean? He, answer choice A, is the odd one out. The other ones are all the same. You can cross them out. The odd one out is A. That is the correct answer. All right, now for tip number two, I want you to pause the video and try to solve this question. Let me guess, it took you longer than three minutes to solve. If it did take you that long, you need to retry this problem until you can do it in less than three minutes. And that applies to any difficult math or reading problem, but especially to math. If any question type is taking you more than three minutes to solve, you are cooked if you see it on your test. I remember going through my SAT and being able to do everything within three minutes, and that was why I was able to finish in time. If any math question is taking you longer than three minutes, you have to be able to get that time down or else you're going to run out of time on your test. So yes, just because you've solved a question once and gotten it correct doesn't mean you're done. Tip number two, redo math problems until you can do them in less than three minutes. All right, guys, now tip number three is that practice tests are too easy. Yes, I'm serious about that. Any blue book practice test is going to be a good bit easier than your actual SAT. And on average, I found that the score drop off is about 50 points for your first SAT. That means if you are getting a 1600 on blue book practice tests, you will most likely get a 1550 on your actual SAT. Now, how can you apply this tip? Well, one, this means that you shouldn't trust your practice test scores, but two, it means that you should focus on being able to do hard questions really, really fast rather than just trusting practice test scores. So yes, I still want you to go through blue book practice test or any other practice test that you have, but just remember that those tests are a little too easy and you need to be going to external third-party resources like prephubtp.com to do questions that are actually really, really hard and mimic the difficulty of your actual SAT. Guys, tip number four is only for those of you who are aiming for a perfect score of 800 on your math section. What you're going to do is on module two of the math section, you're going to skip immediately to question 22 and work backwards from there. Now, what this makes you do is it forces you to work on the hardest questions of the test first and leaves you with whatever time you have left with the easier questions. Now, my mentality is that I'd rather have five minutes left and, and have to do five easy linear questions than have five minutes left and have to do two of these really, really hard questions. Now, technically, yes, you're still answering the same amount of questions in the same amount of time, but in those last five minutes of the test, your brain is going to go into this fight or flight mode and you're gonna be very, very anxious. And when you're anxious, it's easier to do the easy linear questions than it is to do the hard algebra questions at the end of the test. Now, tip number five is all about maximizing your score on the reading and writing module by skipping to the easier grammar questions. So what I want you to do is go through these first few vocab questions and answer them with however much time you need. But as soon as you start seeing the longer passages for the reading comprehension questions, I want you to skip them and head to the grammar section, which is going to be question 15, 16, or 17. 
and work from here until question 27. And once you've answered all of these easier grammar questions, now with whatever remaining time you have left, you can head back to the harder reading passages and still give yourself a chance to answer them. Now, what this does is it ensures that you're not rushed on the grammar questions, which are typically a lot easier to answer if you have time. And with any remaining time you have left, you still give yourself a chance to answer the harder reading questions. All right, now this next tip is for module one math. What you're going to notice when you go through this module is that a lot of the questions are really, really easy and you can even do them in your head. What this results in is you having 10 to 15 minutes left at the end of the module to do whatever you want. Now, the big thing that I see students do is they try to take a nap or go to the restroom this time. What I recommend is that instead of doing that, you simply resolve every single question again. Yes, a lot of the questions might seem super, super easy but you cannot afford to miss any module one questions or else your score will genuinely be cooked. So you're not impressing anybody by taking a nap or acting like you're super smart. Instead, resolve every question and get the score that you want. Now guys, I'm gonna be telling y'all exactly what to do the morning of your SAT as you're getting ready, going in the car and driving to your test center. What you want to do is warm your brain up with some reading passages and a couple math questions. For reading, I'd recommend doing those hard and long reading passages because it's going to get your brain warmed up to just comprehend very, very complex passages. For math, I'd also recommend doing some easy questions to start off and then getting into harder ones. Now, it doesn't have to be a huge amount. It just matters that you're doing something before your exam so you aren't cold going into the test. Now, guys, to end the video, I'm going to be telling you all something that isn't even a tip. It's basically just common sense, but get your damn supplies together the night before the test. If you're wasting brain power on finding your socks in the morning, you are genuinely cooked. Once your supplies are ready, the only thing left to prep is you. And that's exactly what today's sponsor, Brilliant.org, helps with. Brilliant makes you a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of interactive lessons in math, science, programming, and data. Instead of watching boring lectures, you're solving problems hands-on, so concepts can actually stick. It's a way more effective way to learn, and just a few minutes a day builds real problem-solving skills that pay off on test day and beyond. Start learning for free at brilliant.org slash prephub by scanning the QR code or by hitting the link in the description. And on top of that, Brilliant's giving you a lifetime 20% off premium so you can unlock everything.